bless you as you're coming on tonight let us know where you're joining us from put your name in the comments tell us what city and state tell us what you're doing as you're getting ready tonight we love to see it and we're waiting to see it in the cyber sanctuary tonight so come on and join us make sure you like tag and share god bless you ayana lemon Ellen Sumter, God bless you. Thank you for coming on. We're a few minutes behind, um, but we're here tonight. Thank you for coming on. Again, make sure you like, tag, and share, and invite someone, some persons, to the Cyber Sanctuary. God bless you, Mother Singleton. It's good to have you here with us tonight. God bless you. Come on in. Hope that you got your dinner, got you something to drink. You have your life journals. That is my prayer tonight. We're coming, we're coming. I hope something is stirred in your spirit tonight as you are getting ready. That's right, Columbia of Lightwood. You're liking, tagging, and sharing. God bless you, Dr. Pierce. <laughs> Sister Jaleesa, Sandra, Ashley, Sister V. I love to see it. Y'all come on. We're going to talk a little bit tonight. We're going to get out of your way. <laughs> That's the goal. To share a little bit and get out of your way. But I need you to continue to like, tag, and share. Get as many people as you can. Intentionally put someone's name in the comments. Would you do that? Somebody that you believe um, will benefit from this live on tonight. Bless you, Brother Robert. <laughs> I can count on you. You cut up terribly. So we are here tonight. We are ready. So come on and let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome to our Wednesday night. Um, Wednesday night live. I am looking in the comments to make sure life transformation is here. Keep it coming. See Delicia Jackson in the comments. Thank you for being with us on tonight. Um, again, just put somebody's name in the comments that you believe are going to benefit from this word on tonight. Let me make sure I'm on do not disturb. Because I feel <laughs> like somebody's going to try it tonight. 
Amen. But welcome again to Life Transformation Ministries. We are here ready um, to just share briefly in the word. I appreciate you, all of you, for coming into the Cyber Sanctuary um, on tonight. I pray that all is well concerning you um, and that you are here for the right reasons on tonight. If you're stopping by um, to be with us, tell us where you are um, currently right now. Tell us where you are currently right now, whether that's Columbia, Blythewood, Somerville, Charleston, St. George, New Jersey, wherever you are, I want you to put it in the comments um, as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you um, for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're excited about your word on tonight. We're excited to be in your presence. We are excited that there is a word for us. So be with us in these next few moments in time. Share um, with us in your word. Give us clarity of speech, clarity of thought, and hearts to receive what it is that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you, um, Sister Amara Blake. Thank you all um, for coming in. And so again, uh, briefly tonight, um, just want to talk um, to you for a moment. Bless you, Elder McCray in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Tell my family there that I said hello. Um, want to talk to you for a moment. Uh, the Lord began to share with me this morning in prayer um, that he is with us. And I, I want to um, stir you up a little bit in the cyber sanctuary that the Lord is with us. I want you to receive that and believe that on tonight that the Lord is with us um, and understanding um, what that looks like, what that feels like. Many of you, many of us um, are in a season of dealing with um, uncertainties and the unknown. Um, we are dealing with things that we did not ask for. We're dealing with other people's problems, right? And so I'm just going to jump right in on tonight. Um, to just put a plug, the Lord is with us. And I want you to make it uh, personal on tonight. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with Shannon. And if you are not driving, if you are stable, you want to put it in the comments, the Lord is with, and then put your name um, in the comments. And so um, Amara so beautifully uh, shared with us that the word nigh means near. And so uh, the word tells us if we draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to us. What does that look like? What does that mean? I'm going to give y'all just a few moments. That's right. Put your name um, next to that same to that statement. The Lord is with. Right. The Lord is with us. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there with you. Uh, the Lord is, I'm typing it in for myself. The Lord is with us. And so dealing with um, the uncertainties, thank you. Thank you for participating there. The, that's right. My family, the Lord is with Ralph. Bless you, Brother Frazier, um, Minister Johnson. That's right. Um, I love it. I love it. Uh, making a declaration on tonight, the Lord is with us and making it a personal statement. The Lord is with uh, Shannon McCray in her house, her entire house. The Lord is with us. I thank you for that. It is a declaration of faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So whenever there is a word from the Lord that is coming, it makes sense. It makes sense, especially if it is the word of the Lord, for you to take hold of that word, receive that word, and have faith, full faith in that word. Um, it is a declaration and a reassurance that God is present. He is in my right now, right? It signifies that regardless of your circumstance or your situation, that's right, Jaleesa and Mother Singleton, despite your circumstance and your challenge, he is with you Deborah Pierce, right? Um, when we say that God is with us, again, what does that look like? What does that mean? The Lord is with us. Does he not say um, in his word that he will never leave you nor forsake you, right? The Lord, uh, the Lord will never leave me nor forsake me, right? We find that in scripture. The question that I have on tonight is, do we really believe it? 
Do we really believe that the Lord is with us um, in spite of our circumstance and challenges, right? He's with me in the valley, just as he is with me on the mountain. He is with me in the challenges. He is definitely with me um, when I overcome. And so again, many of us are just simply dealing with uh, life's challenges, circumstances beyond your control. Bless you, Elder Phyllis. We are dealing with um, challenges. We're dealing with tragedies. We are dealing with um, situations that we never saw coming. If I can get a witness in the comments, we are dealing with some stuff, some of which um, people know about, some of which has been uh, kept private right? Some of which um, you have chosen to share, some of which you have decided to keep to yourself. Hey, Sister Sandra, I'm so glad to have you with us on tonight. Um, a lot of things that we're dealing with, we don't even have answers for. We, I can't even figure out where that came from. Who did that? Why did that happen to me? Thank you, Sister Ashley. Why did that happen to me? But God wants us to understand and to grab hold to the fact that he is with us. He is our support. You're putting it in the comments. He is our guidance and he is our protection. Now, this is the thing. If you don't know how to multitask by putting it in the comments and writing in your journals, pick a struggle. Choose which one you're going to do on tonight. Um, but in my time of prayer, I begin to ask the Lord for a sign and for a word um, that he hears me uh, when I pray. We had Tuesday night tarry on last night, and we were around the altar and on the conference call calling on the name of the Lord. Um, God gave us a prayer focus on last night for financial breakthrough um, and freedom. He gave us a word and a prayer focus for relational reconciliation and then a word for increased uh, spiritual capacity. And so as we're praying, that was our focus on last night. But God said, before you ask me for anything, enter into my presence. Like, don't just pull up on me. Don't just run up on me. But get in my presence, engage, communicate, become intimate with me. Um, those, those are... Uh, the ways, that is the way to the Father, through prayer, through worship, right? So if I'm going to ask God for anything, I need to draw nigh Amara. I need to get close enough that I can feel him. I need to get close enough in his word um, to feel his arms wrapped around me. I need to get close enough to him to realize that he's guiding me, he's supporting me, he's keeping me. So whatever you need the Lord to be, he will be that. I feel like I'm rushing. Oh, whatever you need the Lord to be, he will be that. He says to me, regardless of your circumstance and your situation, whatever you're in right now, I want that to draw you closer to me. God, I got to go through all that to get closer. Like if that's what you wanted, that's all you have to say. God has been saying, get closer to me, but you've not done it. Um, because when all is well, uh, when things are looking good, thank you, Sister Ashley, when things are looking good in your life and money is good and everybody at the house is doing good, everybody on the job is doing good, if we can be honest, and I'm saying we as an overarching statement, we don't get as close to God as we should. We kind of just, okay, God, things are good, so I'm going to sit you over here. When the whole time God is saying, stay close. Stay close. The only way you're going to know if God is with you is if you stay with him, if you stay near to him, if you draw nigh to him. And while you're drawing nigh, wait on him. OK, so sometimes in prayer, we're praying and we want to hurry up and get through prayer so that we can say that we prayed. We want to hurry up and get through prayer. But we don't take time enough to get intimate with God. Intimacy is about closeness. Right. It's about being close enough um, to see every part of a person, to see every part of a thing. We don't stay close enough to God or get intimate enough with God to know what he wants, nor to know what he's doing. So regardless of what I'm facing, regardless of what I'm going through, he is my support. Right. He is my strength. He is my guidance. He is my protection. Now, with using those things as 
um, an indication, whatever it is that you're going through. Sometimes you feel like you're in it all alone, but you're never alone. The things that you cry over, nobody sees how wet your pillow is with tears. I'm in this thing by myself. Nobody gets it. Nobody understands. If I told somebody, they, they look at me like I'm crazy. And God is saying, I can handle it. If, if you come to me, I can handle it. What well, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. I will give you rest. We are so fidgety. We are so frustrated. We are so irritated. And you don't have to admit it tonight. I'm using the, the phrase we. We as a people um, who are full of faith are so frustrated with our right now situation, right? And our confidence has been tampered with, as the Lord has said to us on a Sunday, whenever your confidence has been tampered with, the one that you have confidence in, now we got a problem, right? We, we got a problem because I know that God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. But right now I've got some needs that have not been met. Can we talk tonight? I've got some things in my life that I want God to do, that I need God to do, but my, my belief that he will do it for me is dwindling. Now I'm going to take my time there. I'm going to take my time there. I know that he can, but I don't believe that he will do it for me. I know that he can heal bodies, but I don't, I don't quite know if he's going to heal mine. I know that he can make a way for me and my family. Uh, I just don't think he's going to do it because maybe we're not close enough to him. Maybe we've messed up. Maybe we have done something. And so now my confidence in his ability to do it for me has dwindled. I'm praying, but I don't see the hand of God moving. I am um, worshiping, but I don't feel anything. Can we talk for a moment that um, in times of prayer, when you don't feel the Lord doing anything, you know, you can be in prayer and most of us in prayer, we want to feel the emotions of the intimacy that we're having with God. But what if when you pray, you don't cry? Can you be okay with that? What if when you pray, you don't feel anything? But the last I, the last I checked, faith is not a feeling. Mm -hmm. Faith is not a feeling. It's a knowing. It's a knowing, right? So when, when we're in our word and we're reading uh, different stories in the word of God of people having faith, faith to do a thing. Uh, Amari, you kind of got me messed up this week. The woman with the issue of blood had enough faith. She got tired of trying to do it in her own strength. She said, so I got to pull on my faith right through here. Maybe never even knew what faith was at that moment, but I got to pull on my faith right through here. I wonder if there's anybody in the cyber sanctuary <laughs> that will say tonight, I got to pull on my faith right through here. I know that he's with me, although sometimes I don't feel it. And could it be I don't feel it because I'm not close enough um, to believe it? I'm not close enough to trust, right? So when I'm praying and I don't feel it, I got to know it. Which means when I run out of words to say, I grab my Bible. I grab my Bible and I start praying the word. I start praying the word. I want to encourage somebody tonight um, who feels less than a Christian, feel like you're not strong enough as a Christian, feel like God ain't going to do it for you. Y'all got it. I, I got to pull on my faith right through here, right? I'm feeling like I'm in it by myself. I got to pull on my faith. I got to pull on the word of God. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? I don't have to see it to trust it. I don't have to see it to believe it, right? When you go to sit in a chair, you believe that that chair is going to hold you. Now, I don't need my chair to give up on me tonight. Right? <laughs> Not tonight while I'm on this live. <laughs> but when you go to sit in a chair, you have faith that when you sit in that chair, it's going to hold you. Right? Chair made by man's hands. But I believe that it's sturdy enough to hold all of this. 
Y'all can come with me tonight. I believe that when I get in my car, my car is going to take me where I'm going, right? I can't see it. I don't know. But all I know is I have somewhere that I'm going. And by faith, I've, I've got to walk it out. I've got to do the parts that are going to get me to where I'm going. So as you're on your way to your healing, you got to do your part by faith. That, it, that means believing what I can't see. When you say by his stripes, I am healed, I am healed means I'm healed right now. And although the doctor's reports do not reveal, it does not reveal my healing. I don't have to see it to believe it. I'm a part there. I felt that for somebody, I don't have to see it to believe it. If the Lord says that he is my shepherd, I shall not want. Although I got some things on my want list that I don't see yet because the Lord is. I'm holding on to my desk because I'm excited. The Lord is. End of discussion. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I can't see everything on my want list checked off, but because he's my shepherd, I shall not want, I have everything that I need. So I'm pulling on my faith in the times where it looks like I have nothing. Why do I feel like I need to whisper? This is my house. In the times that I feel like I don't have what I need, <laughs> I pull on my faith. Yeah, I was waiting for y'all in the comments. I can't see it and it doesn't quite look like it, but by faith, I already have it. Y'all watch your tone. The Lord is. I'm going to preach it, but y'all ain't let me preach it yet. The Lord is. So now faith, when we talk about substance, substance is confidence. Put it in the chat. Substance is confidence. It is assurance. It is conviction. Come on. And it is my reality. Faith is the substance of things. It is the confidence, the assurance, the conviction, the reality of. Right. So the most important, important or practical aspect of all that is hoped for in regards to God's future promises, if he promised it, come on, Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, shall he not make it good? Shall is a guarantee. He's not a man that he would lie. So if his word concerning you is true, and it is, why are we struggling to believe it? That's the question tonight. Why? Pastor, how you, how you, where you at, Pastor? What, what you're saying? I said what I said. Why are we struggling to believe that we're healed? Why are we struggling to believe that we are delivered? Why are we struggling to believe that we've experienced breakthrough, right? So as the breakthrough was happening in the spirit, we are now waiting on the manifestation, the evidence. Come on now, faith. It is the evidence of what I do not yet see. I don't see it yet. I, I received the breakthrough, although I don't see it yet. I believe that he's the God of a breakthrough, right? In addition, the coloring of confidence, assurance, and personal conviction are in play. Virtually making faith in Hebrews 11 and 1 a present tense reality. I have the victory right now in the present. Not I will have the victory when I see the end result of what he has done. So now faith in, in a right now reality, present tense. Oh, y'all messing with me. Evidence. Hmm. So there's a present tense reality of what is hoped for in the future. There's a present tense reality of what is hoped for in the future. Why am I smiling? I felt that. I felt it, but I don't see it right now, but my reality is I'm healed. I am set free. I am delivered. I am prosperous. I am victorious. I am walking in abundance. God is with us. Not God was with us. Not God will be with us, but God is with us. Can you get excited in your spirit? God is with me. He is with me in the valley. He is with me on the mountain. Huh? 
So believe it now, faith. The reality is I don't see it, but I don't have to see it in order to believe it. I don't have to see it. So I have a full confidence in what I am hoping for, right? What I'm hoping for in the future, I receive it right now. God is with me. <laughs> I love him so much. So substance, right? Substance. It's like I'm going uh, out to look for something. I don't see it, but I believe it belongs to me. And so I go ahead and claim it before there's ever a manifestation. Huh? <laughs> before there's ever a manifestation, my, my faith cometh by what? Hearing. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can we unplug our ears tonight? Some of us ain't hearing because we're too busy worrying. Come on. We're too busy worrying. Let's go over to Romans. Let's go over to Romans. I hope you got your Bibles out tonight. Let's go over to Romans. Y'all gonna help me tonight. Romans 10, 17. We are going. Ain't nothing like the sound of a paper Bible. <laughs> the sound of a paper Bible. All right, here we are. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Question becomes, are you hearing the word of God or are you hearing your fear? Hmm. Are you hearing the word of God by faith or are you listening to your fear? Yeah, I'm going to ask it again and I'm going to see who's going to rock with me. Are you listening to your fear or are you hearing the word of faith? You're shaking in your boots. I can't apply for it. I can't go after it. I can't pursue it. I can't have it. I can't have the healing. I can't have the breakthrough. I can't have the abundance. Who are you listening to? What are you listening to? What is it in your life that is telling you that God ain't God ain't gonna bless me with that? God, I, I messed up too many times. Why would he? Jesus already conquered death, hell, and the grave. There's no good thing that he'll withhold from them that love him. We're walking up right before him. We're the righteousness of God. When we talk about the righteousness, the righteousness of God, righteousness, I'm doing the best I can with what I know about salvation. We make righteousness like the color white. And if you, when you know anything about the color white, when you wear the color white, it is going to get dirty. It is it's going to get stained. And so what happens with many of us, because our lives, yes, Lord, have been stained, we feel unworthy. Then what would have been the need for redemption? What would have been the need for salvation? He knew that we would get dirty. This is why he sent his son, Jesus, to redeem us, to cleanse us, right? By the washing of the blood. And so we, we mess up, we get stained, right? We get cleansed. We've already been bought back. We've been cleansed. But one thing I know about white, sometimes in wearing white, we're being so cautious and so careful not to mess up instead of just staying in the will of God. I just want to be in your will. I just want to be in the will of God. And so what? People have seen what you've gone through. They, they know uh, your name. They know your past. They know your stuff. So now you're stuck listening to what people know instead of what God said. So you're rejecting the word of faith. You don't move by faith. You don't pursue um, by faith. Neither can you hear by faith. Faith is cultivated. Watch now. Faith is cultivated and strengthened by a consistent hearing of the word. Some of us only hear the word on Sunday and Wednesday. Some of us only hear the word. Um, through somebody else's post, but a consistent and attentive hearing of God's word is what strengthens your faith. So whatever area you have a deficit, 
whatever area you're struggling in, you need to keep hearing the word concerning that matter. If it's finances, Lord, I, I don't just want to hear uh, turn around seven times. God's going to do it. No, teach me about financial stewardship. Teach me how to repent. Teach me how to confess where I am so that I can receive the blessings of the Lord. Now, look at three and eight. Bring all of the tithe and the offering into the storehouse that there will be meat in my house. Prove me. Put me to the test, says the Lord. Will I not open up the windows of heaven and release an outpour? You got to hear this thing right. Release an outpour of blessings. So you need to check what you're doing. You to, are you bringing all of the tithe and the offering into the store? You need to keep hearing a word. I wish above all things that you prosper, mm -hmm. that you be wealthy, that you walk in abundance and be in good health. But even as your soul prosper, we want the prosperity, but we don't want the process. We want the we want the prosperity, but we don't want the process. So then we never have what God says we can have. Is we just get stuck in one place. You need to constantly, consistently have an attentive ear to the word of God. Engage in scripture. Gain a deeper understanding of his word. Watch his word, his promises, his character, and his guidance. The, the Lord will lead you. The question becomes, will you follow? As the Lord leads you, you need to ask yourself, am I following? No, no not woe with me. I, I should have more um, than, than what I have right now. Uh, better, better should be happening in my life right now. You are coming to church, but you're not hearing the word. Ooh, tight and right. Huh? You are coming to church. You're shouting and dancing. But are you hearing the word? So we want to be accounted for. I was there. I showed up. I'm present. But did you hear anything? Did you hear the word or did you hear offense? I got to turn my fan on. It got, it got hot just that fast. You're hearing oftentimes to be offended because the minute there is a challenge to come up in your giving. You cannot come up in your giving unless you do so by faith. Hmm. You can't do it. It ain't in you to do it. It ain't in your flesh to do it. You can never come up in your giving until you come up in your faith. Because to you, what I have is what I have. So don't you dare go start talking about giving and tithing. I'm doing the best I can. But watch this. You're giving it, but not with the right heart. So what is the point? You're, you're sowing, you're giving, but you're not doing it with the right heart posture. So how can you be blessed? I'm giving, but I don't believe God. That's, that's a mistake. I'm giving it because I don't want to get in trouble with God. But are you giving it because it's an act of worship? It is, it is honoring what the Lord requires, a tenth, which is nothing. We give the server at the restaurant more than a tenth. As you know, we go to the restaurant, we want to prove that we're giving a tenth. You're going to give a server 15, 20% of your bill, but you can't give God an honest tithe? I got questions. I got questions. And, and my finances are here, there, everywhere, and nowhere at the same time. Because heart posture, you've got to shift. I didn't come on here to talk about money, but I'm here now. You've got to shift your mind from, I'm doing it because it's a requirement, to I'm doing it because I love God and I honor him. His envelope be so tight. Don't, don't want to release it. Don't want to give up that tenth. But you want the prosperity, but you don't want the process. No, Lord, change my heart. Hmm? So if I'm going to receive the promises of God, I got to shift, right? I want God's character to be consistent, but mine ain't. I want God to keep his promise, but I don't. I want the Lord to lead and guide me, but I really don't want to follow. Because following him means that there is more required of me. Have y'all liked, tagged, and shared yet? I feel like there's more of your friends that need to hear. There it is, Ayana. We have to give with the heart of worship. 
the, the time to give, we be so uh, bum fumbling, <laughs> so in a hurry, so chatty, moving around. See, when you really have a heart to worship God through your giving, before you get to church, you will have already prepared. I came for this. The same way you come ready for praise and worship, giving is an act of worship. So I need to shift because my expectations, my hope is in him. I've already prepared to give him what belongs to him. So let me get off money so nobody don't get mad. When I am engaged in worship, worship becomes a struggle when you haven't done it all week. The Lord is with us. I'm still on. I'm, I'm going to come back to the topic because it's, it's some, some people that are getting a little fidgety. I feel you. I feel you. I'm picking you up in the spirit. Listen, if you haven't done it all week, you're going to struggle at church on Sunday to worship the Lord because you have not practiced it consistently. How can the Lord be with me if I never worship him? I want to bring it back on, on, on the subject tonight. I know where we are. How can the Lord be with me if I'm never with him? If I only spend time, I got him on a calendar. I got him marked on Wednesdays. I've got him marked on Sundays. And that's all he getting from me. Yeah, but intentional worship, not just when I'm riding in my car listening to worship music. There it is. Seek ye first. Y'all sound like y'all been in this word. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else. Everything that you cried out about in prayer will be added unto you if it's in his will. So we seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness in the seeking, in the drawing nigh, we find out what he wants, what he desires and what his will is for our lives. Then all of these other um, insignificant things that we're crying over will be added. God is not poor in giving out cars, giving out houses, like he's not, He's not poor. Like there's not a lack of cars. There's not a, a lack of houses. There's, there's not a lack of anything. But what happens is we're seeking the thing more than we are seeking the giver of things, right? So if I don't know that God is with me, so I don't go um, to go get the thing that he said I can have because I, I ain't been with him enough to know what he want me to have. I want what I want. Yeah, I want what I want. So I'm getting a deeper understanding through worship, through reading the word, understanding his character. He's not going to give you something that you're not going to steward well over. I want to help you. I want to help you sleep good tonight while you're worrying about why God hasn't done it yet. He's not releasing anything to you that you're not going to steward well over. If you get it, you will get it in your own strength. But in this season, how many of you can say, I'm tired of getting stuff on my own. I want God to do this one. And if God does it, he will keep me in it. He will keep me with it. He will keep me through it. Yes. So in my seeking, can I be honest and say, most of the time when I seek the Lord, I'm telling him what I want instead of asking him what he wants. So if I'm going to build my faith, I got to spend more time with him. Come on, comment section. Come on, comment section, and work with me tonight. I, I, I've got to build my faith and reinforce my faith and stop shaking in my boots and stop acting. We got to stop acting like we don't know him. We know his character. We know what he can do. We know what he will do. But I'm not sure what I'm going to do. And can we can we talk? Can we lean in? You already know you ain't going to store it well because it ain't really in your character. It's, it's not in your natural DNA to store it well. Because once the new wears off, you just do what you want to do. Ask the person that gets a new car. When you first get the new car, you keep it washed. You keep it vacuum. Nobody can eat in your car. And then after you have it for a while, you eat in the evidence. It's on the steering wheel. The evidence is between the seats every time you do decide to go wash it. Because my stewardship level changes when the newness wears off. Mm -hmm. New house, take off your shoes at the door. You can't walk in my house on my carpet until the newness wears off. Then that carpet color starts to change. Your stewardship level changed after God gave you what he promised. Yes. So as we hear and absorb, and absorb the teachings of the Bible, we become stronger. We become more resilient. 
we bounce back after we have been knocked down. I begin to share um, on Clubhouse on today that we are looking at our lives as if they've been ruined by our last situation. Can we talk about that for a moment? Help me, Holy Ghost. Something may have happened to you, and there may be some evidence of ruins, uh, of evidence that something was knocked down or torn down. But God is a rebuilder. He's a restorer. He is, remember, he is with me. And so whenever I've been torn down, he's the one that's going to build me back up. Whenever I've been knocked down, he's the one that's going to pick me back up. So we've got to start living like we know God is what? With us. So I become more resilient in what I believe. I, I may be low on finances, but I'm not lacking anything. My bank account may not look like what it looked like last year this time, but all my needs are supplied. You've got to talk like you know mm -hmm. out of your mouth because remember, our emotions fuel our thoughts and our thoughts fuel our behavior. Amara, many of us are acting like we don't know because we're in our feelings, we're in our emotions, because I want more, I want to be comfortable, I always want to have this cushion, but can God trust you? Huh? Can he trust you when it don't look like what it's supposed to look like? Can he trust you to still steward well over the little? Can he trust you? That becomes the question tonight, right? The Lord will never leave me nor forsake me, we find that in Hebrews 13 and 5, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31 and 6, God remains steadfast, reliable, even when I'm facing difficulty, Elder McCray, Deaconess Cambridge, Sister Ashley, Deaconess and Training Blake. Can God trust me? to have confidence in him, even when I'm facing difficulties and feeling abandoned. <laughs> what you say? Listen, the Lord got me so in prayer this morning. He confirmed, you, you starting to lose confidence in my ability to come through for you. Because I hadn't come through yet, don't mean I ain't coming through. Hear this, Phyllis? Just because he hadn't come through yet doesn't mean that he ain't coming through. And so when you've gotten used to disappointment, you get used to feeling abandoned, you get used to not having, you just accept that as that's the way it's going to be. But if God is with me, there is no lack. If God is with me, I am healed. If God is with me and he is, I walk in abundance. Everything that's in him, when I'm close to him and I draw nigh to him and he's with me, all I got to do is look to him. All I got to do is look to him. I'm feeling abandoned. I feel like nobody cares. Nobody's there. Nobody understands, but God is with me. And so if, if nobody else rings my phone, I can call him up. Mm -hmm. I can get down on my knees or I can sit down in this chair. But when I call his name, he's there. When I call his name, he shows up for me, Jaleesa. He shows up for me, Phyllis. He shows up for me. I have confidence in God that he's always with me. Is he not? He's always with me. When you're taking the test, he's with you. But this is the thing. You can't pray and ask God to help you pass the test if you ain't studied. God, I love you. You can't. Mm -mm. No. You, you, you can't ask God to bail you out when you won't steward well. So sometimes you got to stay in the test until you pass it. Yeah, you got to stay in the test until you pass it. Got to stay in the test. Even when I feel like I'm failing the test, guess what? He's with me, Sandra. Even when it feels like I have nobody supporting me, I am doing this on my own. I am taking care of all of the bills. I am handling all of this. And y'all know that complaining thing that we be doing, right? I, I feel this. I feel, I feel, I feel. Instead of feeling it, faith it. Change your language. 
change your vocabulary. I feel like it just ain't going to work out. Okay, stop feeling. And we know Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for the good of them that love God. Come on, Sandra. And uh, those that are called according to his, are you with me? Yeah, it's, I feel strange right through here, but he is with me. He is interpreting my moaning and groaning. I ain't got to say a word. Me and God so tight, we so close that he answers me before I even ask. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Woo, I want to sing. I got another yes, Lord, in my soul, but I'm not going to sing tonight. I'm not going to do it. Right? He's supporting me. He's leading me. He's guiding me, Ayana. He's doing this because he's with me. In my time of need, he will not abandon me. This is what the word of the Lord is saying. It is a promise. So we have to understand God's promises, his character. His character is that he's not a liar. If he promised it, he's going to make it good. He's going to make it good. He's not going to abandon me when I need him the most. He's not going to abandon me in my times of distress. You may lose our faith in people, but don't you dare lose faith in God. You may lose confidence in people. They didn't show up. No. No, no. They left me hanging. That's okay. But I know who will never leave me hanging. I know who will always be there with me, even in my times of distress. I'm talking to my church tonight. You have been in a period of distress. You have been in a season of ruin where everything is ruined. I was thinking about this when I was preparing um, to teach on tonight that um, you can see something gross and it ruin your appetite. You hungry, but you, you, you let that thing gross you out so much now you can't eat. Who? Oh. Who? Oh. Don't let everything bad, challenging, um, ugly, difficult, ruin what God promised you. That's where I wanted to go. That's where I want to go. You can see something, hear something, feel, experience something ugly, bad, vexing, uh, a, a petty grievance, something that's a nuisance, something that is frustrating, aggravating. But let me tell you something. Huh? I've, now I've got to change my perception. It's I saw it, but I'm not shook. I experienced it, but I will not be moved. God is with me. He's with me when my heart is broken. He is with me when I am dismissed. He is with me, come on, when I am rejected. So I'm not going to let what I felt or what I'm currently feeling dictate what he promised me. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, no, no. Let's say I'm built to last. God is with me. I'm feeling like y'all want to teach tonight. Yes. I'm not going to let what happened to me ruin the rest of my life, ruin the rest of my day. I am talking to somebody in the cyber sanctuary. You let the very, the, the bad news that ruined your day. Am I right? I wish they would have never caught me with that. I'm just going to have a bad day. You have, you going to have what you say. you going to have what you say. So although I feel abandoned by man, God is there, right? He is faithful and committed to his people. I belong to God. He's faithful to me. I have all the strength I need. I have all the courage I need. So what is my self-reflection on tonight? Um, that the fact that God is with us. How do I look back? Because we're closing. We're closing. I want you to get your kids in the bed if they haven't eaten yet. But but what do I need to look back on tonight that tells me that I've been wavering in knowing that God is with me? Is it my confidence in me? Or is it my confidence in God? Where am I placing my confidence? in my own ability or in his ability, all right? The Lord will never leave me. He will never forsake me. You need to write that down. You need to speak that out of your mouth. That's your call to action. I need my language to match his promise. I don't know his promise if I'm not in his word. Mm -hmm. I want you to think back about 
um, a specific time in life where you felt like you was in that thing by yourself. And here comes God. He saves the day, right? He picks you up out of the muck and the mire. He heals your heart. He gives you another reason to smile. He increases your faith. He increases your joy. Look back on the last time God was with you. Look back on the last time God kept his promise. Look back on the last time he came through for you and insert a praise right there. Insert a praise right there, all right? When was the last time you really felt the support of God? When was the last time you felt the strength of God? This is why when we pray, if you're consistent in prayer, you won't always get this jittery feeling, but you'll know that you were with God. Because in prayer, you got to let your, yourself go. You got to let your will go. Lord, I want to pray your will. Huh? So he got to tell me what his will is. Well, how does he do that? He tells me that in his word. I don't skip around in the word to find the parts that fit me. Because sometimes in the word, you're going to get a mighty cutting, a mighty spanking, a mighty rebuke. But it's all the making. Can I tell you the rebuke, the chastening, the pruning is to make you better. It is not to harm you. It is not to destroy you. But we don't want that part. God is with me. Okay, so let's, let me let me say one more thing about it. I'm going to leave it where it's at. God is with me in your mistakes. Mm -hmm. He is with me, not just to cover your mistakes, but correct you so that you can correct your behavior. So that lets me know so we are as near to God as we need to be because I know that he going to get me. He going to get me all the way together. He, he going to tell me about my stuff. And so I stay out of the presence of God. I turn a deaf ear to what God is saying because I don't want to change. I want to see if the comment sections will blow up now. I don't want to change. I like it like this. I like being this way. So... I want to hear that because I want to do this the way I'm doing it. And the whole time God is trying to change you. He is pruning you. He's rebuking you. He's correct because remember, God is with me. Yeah. He's not just with me to get me out of the bad thing, but he's with me to get me to turn back to him. You can be with somebody and far from him. Think about the times that you go out to eat, you go out to dinner, you are together, but you're far from the person because you're on your phone, they're on their phone. You're trying to have a communication and be like, what you say again? You, you with me, but you far from me. And that's how some of us are with God. We're that way with God. And so if I'm going to be clearer um, in, in my desire to be close with God, I got to be honest with where I am right now. Lord, show me me. Show me where I am. I pray that this is making sense to somebody on tonight. Lord, show me where I am. Strengthen my faith. Give me ears to hear. Not ears to be offended. Give me ears to hear. Huh? Give me ears to hear your word. Yeah. Give me ears to hear your correction. Give out hmm, not just the promises of God, because we're gonna shout over that. We're gonna shout over his promises. But can you shout? <laughs> can you shout over a rebuke? I'm asking. This is a question. Is this a good question? Can you shout over rebuke? Can you shout over rebuke? Have you ever shouted over rebuke? Ooh. I'm going to wait for these comments to blow up. I don't see y'all saying nothing. I, I, I don't see you saying nothing. Show me me. Show me where I am. And because you are with me, there are things that you disapprove of in my life. But I'm not hearing you, God. I don't want to hear that. I only want to hear your promises. I don't, Listen, because his character comes with correction. He chastens whom he loved. So when there is a rebuke, it is strong. It wasn't meant to make you dance. Huh? The, the rebuke never comes to make you feel good, but it does come to make you better. 
I just wanted to make sure I, I don't know if if the signal is going out or not, because I'm getting a little delay here. Um, but nonetheless, rebuke comes to redirect your actions, your behaviors and your decisions. I'm going to take about 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes, and I promise I'm going to let you go. Rebuke comes to redirect your actions, your behavior, and your decisions. It comes to correct and to reprimand, often to lead you to better conduct. I don't want to do no better. So watch this. We can't even receive rebuke. Brother Jacob, we can't even receive it. Because when we are rebuked, we are offended and we refuse to acknowledge the only reason we were rebuked is because we offended God. Our disobedience, oh, Pastor, you was doing good when you was talking about all these blessings and these promises. I'm trying to get this promise to you right through here, right through here. So the rebuke came to get me to turn back to God, to change my conduct and my behavior right? Rebukes are intended to address wrongdoing. I can't hear. I can't hear that I'm doing wrong. We said God is with us. Put it in the comments. God is with us. He's with us even when we are being rebuked and corrected. Again, we don't want process. We want the prosperity, the abundance, the open doors, but we don't like correction. And you can't be corrected when there is not an admission of wrongdoing. Yeah. Thank you, Amara, because I need somebody to be reminded God is with us. I don't want them to leave the pastor tonight because she's talking about this correction and this rebuke. Come on, Ashley. Come on, Sister V. All right. So the rebuke is intended to address wrongdoing and poor choices. It encourages repentance and growth. But if you don't hear rebuke, even with the ear, with the right ear, the ear of faith, you won't change, Ralph. You won't grow, Ellen. Come on, Jason Singleton. We can't grow without correction. We can't grow without being challenged. It's nothing like a church that will shout and dance as long as we making it rain. I said it like that for a reason. As long as we are talking about prosperity, there's going to be a praise. But the minute your wrongdoing is addressed. I can't hear. My ear. My ears ain't open. I don't receive that. She must be talking to the left side because right side, no, 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 no. God is speaking. Can we hear? I made a poor choice in my conduct. I made a poor choice in my stewardship. I made a, a poor choice in the way I handled another individual. And so when God comes in his character to do so, we ain't saying nothing to God. We ain't, listen to what, how I said, we ain't saying nothing to God. I want to grow. Lord, make me more like you. Change me. He says, okay, first change your character. I, I'm looking at your conduct. I'm looking at your behavior. Get somebody else to do it, God. I don't want to do it. But rebuke encourages repentance and growth. The next time the Lord sends a word of correction, I want you to give him an even greater praise that he loved you enough to correct you and not let you continue in sin. What is my call to action on tonight as it relates to the Lord is with us? What is my call to action on tonight and how I can receive correction and rebuke? What is our call to action on tonight as it relates to drawing nigh to God? What is it that I need to do, God? Because what I'm not going to do is go another season like this. What I'm not doing is going through another season like this one. This, this one got to come to an end. It, this, <laughs> Taylor, he loved me enough to correct me. So on a personal note, acknowledge that the Lord is with me. Acknowledge that I need to draw nigh or get closer to him. And I can't get closer to him full of pride. I can't get closer to him full of my own will. I cannot get closer to him being fake and phony. You've got to come to him naked and unashamed. 
When I come to the Lord, I thank him for being with me, even in my wilderness. I thank him for being with me, even when, um, you know, all is well. I thank him for being with me and never taking his hand off me. It's a good Wednesday night, nightlife lesson, right? My prayer is to recognize his, his presence in every situation. You're, you're facing being let go from your job. The Lord is with me. You're facing promotion. The Lord is with me. You're facing a career change. The Lord is with me. I don't know whether to go left or right, but I know the Lord is with me. Mm -hmm. I feel you there, All right? Trust him in every situation. Trust that he's leading, guiding, and supporting. Is that right? This is These are our call to actions tonight, right? Be open to correction and rebuke. You didn't think we were going to talk about that tonight. I know. That's why I saved it for last. Be open. Somebody shout, I'm open. I'm open to be corrected. I am open to the rebuke of the Lord because it's going to make me better. And the one thing I want to be tonight is better, 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 right? Rebuke doesn't always come through the pulpit. I want to pause and insert because because everybody ain't open. But there will be times of personal, uh, intimate times with God where he will rebuke. He will correct. You don't have to wait to Sunday to be rebuked. If you spend time with God and you're open and you have an ear to hear, the Lord will tell you, go get that right. The Lord will tell you, put that down. The Lord will tell you, Turn back this way and follow me. You don't have to wait. That so Some of us are messed up because we're waiting. We're going seven days without hearing. Seven days without being open to the love of God. Love me and, and, and restore me and, and bring me back to a better place. He says, not until I show you you. You don't want God to show you you. And so you mask it and you go throughout the week doing you. You try to get to church Sunday and try to get it all the way together. I pray that we get to a time that by Sunday, the Lord will have corrected you, rebuked you, reproved you, got you together, restored you, so that when you get to church on Sunday, you can give him unrestricted praise. That coming to church on Sunday will be evidence that the Lord is with me. He's been with me all week. I got a spanking this week. I've been corrected this week. I've been rebuked this week because that's how close I've been with God. Stop waiting for your leader to have to do it when God is already doing it, right? Put it in the comments. God is already doing it. He's already doing it. Be open. Open up your heart to constructive criticism. You already know when you do wrong, just as a child who have been told not to touch a hot stove and they do it anyway, they run the risk of being burnt. Some of us are like children. We have already been told what to do, what not to do. We do it anyway, or we do it not, right? We do it not, and then guess what happens? Guess what happens? We get burned. We get hurt, right? And so now God is saying, I told you, but come here. I love you enough mm -hmm. because some rebuke will come private, yes? Some rebuke will be a private rebuke, but if you're not spending time with God, how do you know when his correction is coming? He will have already told you before anybody else has to tell you, but your refusal to hear, your refusal to listen puts you in a place, a very vulnerable place, in a place where now you are open to being rebuked openly because you haven't taken heed to what the Lord is saying. I'm going to get off of that. I'm going to get off of that. So my prayer becomes, Lord, I humbly submit myself to you and I accept your correction. I am praying for wisdom and discernment to understand and apply this correction so that I can be better. I don't want to do that again. Yeah. I, I don't want to be going from job to job to job to job. So Lord, teach me, give me discernment. Yeah, you lo Lord, love me so much to tell me when to hush my mouth and when to speak. Lord, love me enough to not allow me to make a fool of myself. This is how you got to pray. You got to pray. Lord, help me not to make a fool of myself. Lord, help me. I want to be better and I want to grow. 
right? My other call to action is this, draw nigh to God. I want to be closer. I want to be closer. I want to be closer. Mm -hmm. I want to be closer. Mm -hmm. I want to be closer. And so, Lord, block every barrier. Every barrier that is keeping me out of your presence. This is our prayer. We're closing because I'd only ask for 10 more minutes. I want to be closer, so draw me closer. You have to ask him because your flesh ain't going to do it. So, Lord, draw, draw me closer to you in the spirit. Get me out of that bed in the morning. I want you that bad, Lord. I want to be intimate with you that bad that I'm willing to give up this warm, cozy bed to be in your presence. You really want it. You're going to have to sacrifice. You really want to get close. You've got to get close to him and avoid all of the distraction, all of the things that's going on in your day. Right? Spend time in prayer, worship, and study of the word. I needed an answer from the Lord today. The Lord took me to Haggai 1 and 13. I'm going to release this and I'll come back. Right. Mm -hmm. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke the Lord's message to the people, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. I prayed this morning and I asked the Father to give me a sign to let me know that you're with me. Because I'm feeling out of sorts and I just don't know. I opened the Bible. This, this is a new Bible. And so I probably only open this particular Bible three or four times. So I'm trying to get used to, you know, your, your your Bible that you're familiar with, you could just turn to familiar passages of scripture. But I'm saying, Lord, send me a sign. The Lord's messenger, Haggai, spoke to the people saying, I am with you, says the Lord. Right? So then the Lord stirs them up in the spirit. If nothing else happened tonight, I want you to awaken I want you to be stirred. I want you to be excited. I want you to get up. I want you to proclaim. I want you to put your faith in action. I want you to open up your eyes and see that the Lord is with you. I cannot just teach you all of the things that are going to make you happy. But as the Lord is leading me uh, to cover you and to teach you, you're going to hear some things that don't feel so good to you. Are you still open? Or do you shut your ear? So tonight, I, I don't need you to take away, oh God, here she goes, talking about that. I want you to take all of it collectively. He loves me enough to be with me. In my times of right doing and wrong doing, he is still with me. I want you to get excited that he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. I want you to be excited and I want you to get your faith up that even in this, he's working with me. He's changing me. He's pruning me. He's cutting off dead things. He's moving the distractions out of the way if I let him. If I let him. So be stirred up and be awakened to action. My faith needs to be in action. Yeah. My faith needs to be in action. And so he continues to say, I am with you. I went to Haggai, the second chapter. And I got down to, let's see, verse four. Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, the high priest, and be strong, all the people in the land. Life transformation, be strong. The Lord is with us. Get excited right there. The Lord is with us. Stir up your excitement in, in spite of our current challenges, our current situations, what we're facing, what we're going through, and what we're feeling, life transformation, and those that will receive this word. You may not be a member of our church, but we're members of the body of Christ. And the spirit of the Lord says, I am with you, so be strong. All of the people in the land, says the Lord, and work. That means no laziness. Nobody can do it for you. Get up and work. 
for I am with you. I said, really, God? So you got to tell me twice that you are with me. you got to tell me twice that you've anointed me for this. You're giving me strength for this. And he simply says, I am with you. That my question, what, what are we doing? That I'm with you. But God, I can't see what's going to, I'm with you. Well, why does it feel like we're going back? I'm with you. Well, why, why are the numbers dropping? I'm with you. I'm with you. So no matter what the challenge, the situation, be strong, people of God. Thank you um, for putting that their life transformation. Be strong. He's with us. Individually and corporately, the Lord is with us. And so I'm excited tonight um, in our prayer that as we're cultivating an intimate relationship with the Father, we're going to seek him. He's giving us a seeker's anointing that if you seek him while he may be found, if you seek him with your whole heart, you will find him. Jeremiah 29. Seek him with your whole heart and you will find him. I pray that something was said on tonight that would encourage you, that will make you want to be better, make you want to do better. So we're going to end tonight with giving. We are going to give on tonight. The ways to give are on the screen. I pray that you have been excited, that you are still excited, that you are stirred, that you're doing self-reflection on tonight. Lord, show me me. Don't show me nobody else. Show me me. Show me my heart. Show me my heart posture and the things in me that are not pleasing to you. If it's not pleasing to you, Take it out of me. I've been messing with Sister Mara all night. If it's not pleasing to the Father, take it out of me. Our ways to give are here tonight. Um, dollar sign LTM give if you're giving by Cash App. Give LaFi as Life Transformation Ministries. We bless the Lord for our coming together on tonight. How you've been with us on tonight. You've been participating tonight. And I speak blessings multiplied in your lives because of your attentiveness to the word of God. So what we do here is we give. We give according to our faith, not according to our need. Glory to God. We give according to our faith and not according to our need. Huh? Because he's with me, I don't fear. I'm not worried. <laughs> because he's with me. Mm -hmm. He's with me. And so we're giving. We're grateful to God um, for what he's doing, for what he's saying, for what he's revealed to us on tonight. There was enough on tonight to unpack for the rest of the week, for the rest of the week. And so our, um, again, ways to give are on the screen. Let's all be guilty of giving on tonight. We also have our church app in our text to give. Um, so if you're part of the ministry, you know the ways to do that. If you're watching the replay, we invite you to give. If you've been blessed uh, by this word on tonight, do that. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir. By way of announcement, Friday night, this Friday, we're going to be postured in prayer. I'm hosting a postured in prayer evening service of prophetic worship and prayer. You all are invited to be with us. You're invited to come um, and share in this time of intercession. If you're free, if you're available, if you want to get closer to God, meet me on Friday night at 8 p.m. 500 Horseshoe Circle, Columbia, South Carolina, 29223. Yes. So those are our announcements. We bless the Lord um, for all that he's done. We bless him for all that he is doing. And we're grateful that his promises um, are yes and amen. Yes and yes again. So everything that he has promised us, Mother Singleton, let's turn our faith up. Let's pull on our faith and get an expectation. Elder McCray, let's pull on our faith and get in expect expectation. I'm getting ready to see what he said. Hello, 
I'm getting ready to see what he said. No holes barred. I'm withholding nothing. I'm giving him my worship. I'm giving him my time. I'm giving him my tithe, my offering, my seed, my talent. Lord, I give you all of me. And what God is going to do and what he's already doing in return has already been prepared for you. That's right, Nakia, turn that faith up. There are things that the Lord has promised. He's getting ready to make good, Jaleesa. All we've got to do is get in position. Get in position for what the Father wants to do. Um, so again, we thank you on tonight. Uh, pay attention to the announcements. Stick with us. Um, if you have not liked and followed our ministry page, do that. Stay connected. Um, if you're looking to be covered, you don't have a church home. You're looking um, for a place to call home. You're not really ready to join the church. We have an awesome opportunity for you to become a life partner. That is for a person that des desires to be covered, but they're just in between. I'm in between um, churches. I'm in between um, in my faith. I'm not sure if I want to lock in, but I know I need the word. I know I need a place to sow. I know I need a place to be covered. I need somebody praying for me. If that's you in the comments, I want you to hashtag life partner. I want you to hashtag life partner. Um, we are ready and in position to cover you, to pray for you, um, to give you guidance through the word of God teach you and help you grow up in your faith. So if you're looking for a place to worship, you say, well, I don't live in Columbia. You don't have to. As a life partner, we can cover you wherever you are. We just want to connect with you by faith so that you can grow in the things of God and experience uh, the promises of God, experience everything that God said that he has for you. So again, if you're looking for a place, you're looking for a covering, you're looking to be kept um, in the know, opportunities for prayer, opportunities to serve in the community, we want you to put hashtag life partner in the comments. I love you, Father. We thank you. We praise you for all that has been said and done on tonight. Let no one leave uh, this lesson the way they came. You've given us so much to consider on tonight. Let us find us where we are. Let us find ourselves, oh God, where we are, but begin to show us where you are taking us. For you know the plans that you think towards us, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us a future and a hope. And so we thank you on tonight that our confidence is in you. Our faith is all the way up and we are stirred in expectation of what you're getting ready to do in our lives. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Everybody type amen in the comments. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you. Next Tuesday night, we'll be um, tarrying in the sanctuary. So Tuesday night, tarry. Keep that in mind around the altar. If you're not in Columbia or if you can't make it, we have a conference call number. Maybe we can uh, put that in the comments. Put that in the comments. We have a conference call number that you can join us this Saturday. Listen, there's prayer happening. There is prayer happening. This Saturday is our corporate prayer at 6 a.m. Join us via conference call. You want to get closer to God. You want to be on the prayer call. And so put that, um, that number in the comments, if you will. Don't forget to invite someone to prayer, right? More prayer, more power. God has given us discernment. He's given us revelation. He's given us the wherewithal to be better. So again, we love you with the love of the Lord. Um, Sundays at 12 noon, I almost forgot. You are invited to worship uh, with us. Sundays at 12 noon. This is the last month that we will be doing 12 noon worship. We're going to go back to our previous time because the summer is ending. But join us at 500 Horseshoe Circle, Columbia, South Carolina, 29223 at Life Transformation Ministries. We are indeed better together. I want to give a big ups to our outreach ministry and those that had a hand in donating new shoes, those that collected the shoes, those that went shopping for the shoes, those that organized the shoes, those that passed out flyers, everybody. 
everybody that had a hand in our back to school initiative. You did a phenomenal job. So hats off to you. Thank you, Elder Sumter, for leading the team. Thank you to the outreach uh, ministry who worked along with her and anyone else that volunteered. We want to say thank you. Um, back to school is off to a great start. Um, and the Lord is allowing us to take the remainder of the donations to a family group home right here in Columbia to families are, who are displaced and they're in a group home, but they have several children who are in need of new shoes. So let's keep doing big things for the kingdom of God. Stay excited. Stay on the lookout. God is going to do some amazing things through us. We just need to be in position to get it done. So again, thank you so much to all of you um, that have given monetary donations or if you've actually donated the sneakers. We thank you so much for doing that. Um, again, there will be more opportunities in the future. So keep praying for us. Keep praying for us. Keep working along with us as we are transforming lives equipping families and changing communities for christ again thank you so much for joining us until next time god bless you and good night I love you as well. God bless you. To each of you. I love you, love you, love you. Thank you for allowing me to pour. Thank you for allowing me to share. I love you. God bless you. Good night. God bless you. I love you very much.